Dr. Thank you, Reina. Hello. Hello, hello, everyone. It's another fun hour of learning here with Michaels and Faber Castell. My name is Leigh Ralston, and I will be your workshop leader for today. Today is going to be super easy, super fun, and also it's going to be really easy to follow along. Um, before we start, I also want to go over some of the materials that we'll be using, and then we'll get started with the workshop. But before that, we'd like to thank everybody for being here today with us. Good day to you. Good afternoon. Good evening, whichever part of the world you are. I've seen a lot of people from California, Tennessee, Texas, Oklahoma. Hello, everybody. And we appreciate you joining us today. Um, today's class, well, you can, everything that you will learn today, you can use it for your future DIY projects, like handmade cards. Um, I always love receiving handmade cards. You can get creative with your notebooks, journals, um, bullet journals, planners, and any DIY projects that you have. Um, it's going to be easy. We're going to be learning about the lowercase alphabets, and we'll be using Faber-Castell Pitt artist pen. And I'll stop this camera and scooch over to the overhead. Here we go. Thank you so much. So um, before we proceed, I'd like to just quickly talk about if some of you are new here, we have done a lot of classes in the past that you can watch, go to Michael's YouTube channel. And you can find a lot of different classes there, you know, um, anything and everything about staying creative. So today's class is brought to you by Faber-Castell. So we'll be using the Pitt Artist Pen. If some of you are new here, or you haven't joined us um, in our past classes, the Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pens are water-based India ink. These are bleed proof, waterproof, and they are light fast. When we say bleed proof, if you are doing some bullet journals, Bible journaling, these markers are really great for that because you're not going to ruin the page and the other one, there's not going to be any mess with inks bleeding through the next page. And that's why I love this one. If you are using like any planner, if you're part of the planner community, I think you will fall in love with the Pit Artist pens. What um, waterproof waterproof means you can play and get creative with some of your favorite mediums like gouache watercolor and you know that this is not going to make a mess when the water touch it. Um, of course, there are a lot of different techniques that you can use the India ink because it's water based so that means it will also um, blend with water when it's still a little bit wet, but once it's dry, it's going to be waterproof. Light fast. Light fast means that your projects will last and stay vibrant for a very, very long time. Also, the ratings of the light fastness can be found in the pen itself um, beside the name of the markers. Um, and then the color itself. So I love that it has names because you know how some pens are just numbers. This one comes with names and I just love that. <laughs> okay, so lowercase alphabet. We'll be using the brush tip today. Um, the Pit Artist also comes in with many different tips. I have here some examples. So if you are not, you know, very comfortable yet with a brush, pens, you can always use different tips that they offer. They have brush, they have soft brush, they have the fine, um, the super fine, and then the extra super fine. They have chiseled and soft chiseled as well. And the 1.5 bullet tip too. Okay, so, and I'm going to be using a Rhodia pad. So this, all of these, you can find these in your local Michael store, or you can order, order them at michaels.com. All right, I might be using some marker as well. The reason why I'm sharing with you why <clears throat> I love using these papers when it comes to my lettering. So the brush tip itself is made out of felt. And when you're using a rough or a textured type of paper, basically it's going to really hurt the nib of your brush. And it's going to be hard for you to get the tin, the thin, <laughs> 
I can't speak today. The thin and the thick strokes. <laughs> so <clears throat> make sure to use a paper that is really soft. And when it's soft, what it's going to happen is that your pen will just glide and smooth, smooth like a newborn, <laughs> smooth like butter. It's really, you're adding life. You're adding life to your brush pens. The good news is that the Faber-Castell, the pit art is, it comes with two nibs. It's super fun. So it's like getting two pens in one marker. I don't have anything to pull it, so I'll just use my finger, but you can use a tweezer like that. So the tweezer, so if this one, you've hurt it and you've scratched it and it's really scratchy and textured, you can always flip that nib and get a brand new one like that. And also an extra tip is that I, most of the time I like to pull on my nibs like this because what it does, it just gives me more flexibility. Okay, I'm going to zoom a little bit so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we go. Look how flexible it gets. That means I can get a much thicker stroke. And that's why I love to pull on my nib sometimes. So if you have some pit artists, you might wanna move it up, pull it up a little bit and see how you like that. And if you don't like it, you can just always push it back, right? So that's an option. Okay, so let's get started with our small letters or lowercase alphabet. Since we're going to be using the brush pen, I'd like to quickly um, talk about how you can get those thin and thick strokes. Um, we like to call that the modern calligraphy or um, brush lettering, hand lettering. Everything is, you know, sometimes the terms are just different. But basically what it is, is that your writing has a thin and thick strokes. So I'd like to do this little bit of sample here so you guys can see. And also, like what I've mentioned, if you'd like to get a much more detailed class when it comes to the brush lettering. We have those classes that we made in the past. Just go to Michael's YouTube channel and you'll find those. But right now we'll just quickly go over the details of how to get these brush lettering. So when you're using a brush pen, the brush itself will not just give you the variation of strokes. How to get the different type of strokes is by adding different pressure while working with your brush pen. Now to get the thin strokes or to get really thin lines like this, this means you have to apply really light pressure. Now to get your thick strokes, you have to apply heavy pressure. To also get the proper thick stroke that you'd like, you wanna hold your pen, your brush pen, 45 degree, relatively 45 degree angled. Basically, instead of holding it this way, you wanna go tilt your hand, make sure that you have great control. This is stable. Let me zoom out so you guys can see the position of my hand like this. So I have a really stable here. It's firm and I get control. And the way you hold your brush pen will have to be relatively 45 degree from the paper here. Because if you're going to get the thick stroke like this, like that, that is not going to work. So what you want is you want your brush pen slightly tilted like this to get the proper thick stroke. Also at any point here when we're doing, if I'm going a little fast for you, please do let me know in the chat section. I am using a Rhodia pad. The Rhodia pad is a dot grid pad. And I really love using it because of the dot grid. You can use um, a copy paper that is very smooth finish, but having those guides, the dot guides, just gives me um, the proper guidance of how small and how big I want my letters to be. Okay. So again, thin stroke means light pressure. To get the thick stroke, you have to apply heavy pressure. 
and with everything else, I always, I always talk about this practice and repetition will really help you with your brush lettering. It doesn't matter how many classes you attend. <laughs> if you don't practice and spend time to get to know your tools, it's you're not going to improve. Another, um, another tip that I like to share is always keep a, if you can find a notebook or a journal that has very smooth finish, I would prefer that you will keep that so that you can really see your progress as you go along with your hand lettering or your brush lettering. Okay, so small or lowercase letters, I love using them. Uh, I just, I don't know, fun fact, I just, just like writing in capital letters. I don't know why, even the nouns, now that I'm not in school, <laughs> I still use small letters, okay? Um, Ivana is asking if she can use a printer paper. Definitely you can. One paper that I highly recommend is the HP Laser Paper. This is the Premium 32. So that's the HP Premium 32. And I love that because it has very smooth finish and you're not gonna hurt your brush pens. All right, so let's, pick a fun color here when we're doing lower cases. And let's pick a color that you'll still be able to see on screen. There we go. And then I'm going to adjust this one because this one, obviously I haven't adjusted. So I'm just gonna pull a little like what I did with the color green earlier. All right, so let's start with the letter A. We all know how to do writer letter A, okay? So just simple letter A like this. But as you can see, even with that being simple letter A, we still have the variation of the stroke. We have the thin and the thick, and then the thick again. Now to get the thin and thick, how would I know? That's the question. How would I know which one I'm going to apply, the thick and the thin? That's a good question. So when you're doing brush calligraphy, every time you're doing a down stroke, which means you're your marker is going in downward motion. This is when you're going to apply your thick. Anytime you're going downward motion, that is when you're going to apply your thick stroke. When you're doing your upstroke, this is when you're going to apply really, really light pressure. Okay, again, downstroke, thick, applying pressure, when I'm doing my upstroke or anytime your pen is moving in upward motion, this is when you apply your thin stroke. All right, so what have we learned? Downstroke, heavy pressure. Downstroke, which means thick lines. Upstroke, thin pressure, this means thin line. So those are just a few pointers that it's really, important for you to remember when you're doing um, brush calligraphy or brush lettering, because that is the only way you're going to attain this. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but this is the proper way that you have to do this because see, if I'm going to apply heavy pressure all around, it's going to look like this, but that is not wrong because that could still be a creative lettering. So it's up to you if you wanna do the proper mimicking the old calligraphy, but this is how it was, this is how they do it. Thick stroke every time I go down and then thin stroke and light pressure every time I go up, all right? Um, Tanya, we, I, we always get this question about the left, um, the left tees. The really best explanation that I can give um, is that everything that I am teaching is the same way. The down stroke will still be the same. Every time you will go down is still when you're going to apply your pressure. So every time I go down, I still apply pressure. And every time I do an upward motion, I'm still doing a very light pressure. So this goes the same way for the lefties. You're still going to be holding your pen relatively 45 degrees tilted and not this way. So everything's the same. It just goes the opposite side. All right. So. Review again, downstroke, 
Every time we go down is when we apply pressure. Every time we go up, we go light. So repeat that all over in your head. And again, with repetition, you will get this. We don't have to keep repeating it. The more you do it, the more it comes natural. You're going to build this muscle memory. And that's the most important. To build the muscle memory, you have to keep doing it over and over again. Absolutely. Trisha, you can use a line paper. It doesn't matter. Yes, most definitely. Yes, the, the upstroke is really hard and <laughs> it's okay. I understand the frustration because that is when I was really having a hard time too, simply because I have naturally heavy hands. So I have a natu naturally heavy handed person. So when I write, um, I have heavy hands. So I would naturally just get the downstroke easily. So when I'm doing the upstroke, this is when you have to be mindful. So you know that you have heavy hands. So just kind of oops. And then knowing that you're going up and you're doing the upstroke, it's okay. Pause. No one says that you have to complete your stroke at one time. So pause in there and then be mindful that, okay, I'm going up. Then I have to go really, really light. And this is what I'd like to always share with my students is that do it one stroke at a time. When you're doing hand lettering and brush lettering, it's not like the, nat the, the regular writing or the regular script writing. See how I did the one here? When you're doing hand lettering, this is like drawing every letter. So you wanna do one stroke at a time. It is super important. So even the letter O, I would stop in here and kind of pause without lift. You can lift your pen from the paper. You can do that or just simply be mindful and go slow and finish your letter O. So it's just all about paying attention and then just doing everything one stroke at a time. And I think I've seen a lot of people making this mistake is that they would write the word in one stroke. Don't do that. You always wanna do pause in here. This is my downstroke. Now I'm going upstroke, so I'm gonna go really light. And I'm going to pause in here again. I will lift my pen most of the time and just kind of create the downstroke for the end. And then I have here upstroke. So I'm going really light and then apply pressure and then go really light again. So it's just all about one stroke at a time. Okay. All right. So let's practice our letters. Here we go. So for the letter A, I'm going to apply pressure first. Think of it as you're making a letter O. And this is what you're going to figure out. The more you do this, you're like, oh, it's just like a letter O. It's so simple like that. And then we're just gonna add this letter A here. How do you make the letter A more creative? This is a fun way I like to do this. So I kind of just add a loop, just light, light stroke. And then I add the letter A. And instead of them having the same height, Sometimes I'd like to go down a little bit like this, just a little lower. And then I'd like to add the thicker stroke in here. And this is where you can just play and use your creativity. It's kind of like, you know what? I'm just gonna add those a little bit here and there. So you don't have to get something um, perfect in one try. So I think with you getting that out of your mind, I think it's going to be much easier for you because practice makes everything better, not perfect. Remember that. So like, wait, like what I said, so here it just doesn't have the same height. I just kind of like dropped it down just a little bit and then went up. So see the difference. And then we added this one. What you can do too is like go much, much bigger. And just like that. And make it a little bigger. And then instead of having a straight like this, I slanted. So sometimes a simple, simple um, change like that will, will really make a big difference in the way your letters will look. So play around with the height, with the width, um, you can make it like really, really wide like this. So instead of doing this time, adding your loop in the, the beginning, you want to add it in the end. 
and that's okay too. So kind of like, see, there's, there's just so many things that you can do in letters because remember when you're doing a modern calligraphy or a creative lettering, you're drawing the letters. You're not just writing, we are drawing it. So it, it is up to your creativity, what you wanna add in there. The most important thing is that it has to be readable. People still has to be able, will have to be able to read what you're writing. Um, so if you're gonna put it out on the internet, that's the thing. Your, people will still have to understand those letters because I've seen a lot of people doing lettering and they're just sometimes they're just so close together you know the distance from one letter to another those are going to make the big big difference in your lettering piece okay so those are ways that I love to do my letter A's um, sometimes I just kind of like simple like this and then I kind of loop it like that too so see you play around with the loops um, so see this time we're going to do it like this do it like that. Do it like that. And then it's going to be, so now let's do the letter B. Let's just write it, letter B. Simple letter B like this. Uh, I think I've seen something about Copic markers. That should work too, but I don't like using Copic markers because first, they're very expensive. Second, they bleed. So <laughs> I, I try to avoid um, Copic when it comes to lettering. I just love using the India ink because it doesn't matter what kind of notebook I'm using. I know that I'm not going to ruin my journals and my notebooks and diaries that way. Okay, so letter Bs. What are the fun ways we can hand letter this one? Okay, so we can do this way. Like that. We can do the same way, but this time we're going to do this, add a loop here and do it like that. Yes, Carol, you can use brush markers, absolutely. And then instead of swooping down, this time I'm going to go up and do the loop. Let's go that same way and then this one, just like that. And then we can still repeat the same process we did and then kind of add the loop that we created in the beginning and just go a little higher like that. Super pretty. Once you're still, if you're a beginner in lettering, um, one thing that I would avoid is trying to add so much swashes um, in the beginning because it might just confuse you or get you frustrated. I would focus on really doing um, really concentrating on the pressure that I'm applying in my letters and make sure that I'm getting the correct variation of my thin and thick lines. Okay, so for the letter C, C is pretty simple. So kind of just kind of do that, simple letter C. Sometimes I like to do this, but not too much because sometimes it ends up looking like a letter E too. So if I, if you get your loop just a little too big, it might end up looking like a letter E. So see what I mean. So this is when it's important that your letters are still very, you know, readable, that make sure that that's a C and that's an E. So instead of doing that, I would sometimes do this, do a loop here, see? I'm just gonna add my letter C in there. So instead of this, I just went like this little bit, and letter C that way. And again, play with your highs. If you want it slanted, if you want it regular, if you want it a little thick, so like that. Now let's do a letter D. Here we go. This is just like the letter B. But our belly is over here to the left. So we can do this. Like that. Like this. So this one's just standing straight. And this one, I kind of tilted my letter. So it's just by doing that, you have a different look. And then I love doing this 
loop like this, but it will not work for my letter D if I put that on top. So it has to go in the belly. And then I go like this, just a simple downstroke in that way. That's very pretty. I think it's my favorite. Okay, so for the letter E. Letter E, you can't really do so much with this one. You can't add so much swashes. But I think how I like to adorn <laughs> my letter E's is that if I'm writing, um, let's say, Eve, okay. So I tried this. I can do this. Instead of it just here, I like to kind of push it up closer to that loop. So I'm writing it, letter E. But make sure that you have a very good space between the loop over here and that tail that you're going to create. So if you're gonna do the Eve, again, sample so you guys can see like this, it's going to be hard to see that. So make sure that you have this space in between that loop and the tail that you created, All right? Okay, so letter F. Do you have a favorite letter to letter? <laughs> I think mine would be letter M. I think I really love the letter M. So F is like that. So the different loops that I like to do or the swashes I like to do, sometimes it swoops like this and sometimes it goes from the bottom to go top. So sometimes from the going down and sometimes it's going up. So those are the different ones that I love to start my letters with. So let's do the letter F. So instead of going down, I'm going up this time. I'm pulling it up, going up like this and then go really way down and do it like that. If you do the opposite, going down this time. And then sometimes I like to like that. So adding just a little bit here and there or changing just a little bit here and there just really um, give you this different look. It's like, at, I, at first I'm like, oh, just a simple thing like that. It changed the whole, um, it changed the whole illustration or the piece that I'm working on. So for letter G, simple G is like this, right? Okay, so how can we make this creative and pretty? Still the same way. We started with the kind of like a letter O. And then this way, stop here because I myself, find myself um, having a little difficult time with my upstroke or my thin lines, just because again, I am naturally heavy handed. So that's a letter G. We can do what we did with the letter A. We kind of started with this loop. I did this. And this time I'm making a really big loop. See how pretty that is? That is so pretty, super pretty. Where you can just do it like this and have a small loop. So everything, every change you're going to add in there is going to be, going to affect the whole look of the letters and just play around. It, it's, it's okay. You don't have to do the traditional letter G. Um, you can make up your own as long as it's readable that is fine. So you can just do like this. That's another way, you know? So or just like that. So just play, play. And that's what we're doing right now. We're just playing. Okay, so letter H. So my downstroke, upstroke, and just like this. So that's the letter H. So how can we glow up our letter H? <laughs> like that and then add this and then add that and then how can we go a little bit extra this time see this one is just standing right up this one i'm going to get slanted kind of like this 
and then H and go down, see different height, change the whole thing. So instead of going down this time, I'm gonna go up like that. Same height, so I just change this loop and then I still remain the same height in this one. Okay, so letter I, let's change the color so that it's fun. Let's do the letter I this time. Again, letter I is something that I, I don't think I have a lot that I can do with the letter I is to make it super, super pretty. I guess like this, you can pull this one up like that. But the thing is what I'm showing you right now, what happens is that if you're going to build words, it's going to make a difference. Now this time, because we're writing or we're drawing the letters one by one, we can play around with the swatches. But if we're going to write the word, let's say we're going to write the word hi, how can we do it simply? So H, and then our letter I this time, because we cannot add this in the beginning, right? So you wanna play around with the end. So play around with the beginning letter, with your first letter. So H, you can do this. And then we're going to adorn the last letter of the word like that. So that's your letter I. So now we're going to do a letter J. Kind of like the letter G without that belly. This is a letter J. And then just add your dot. And then like my favorite look is add that loop. Bring this one up. And add that. Maybe I'm biased. My husband's name is Jason. So <laughs> I play around with the letter J quite a lot. <laughs> okay, so this time we go swoop down again. So once you like really get yourself familiar with your loops and all that, I think that's when playing with your letters and, and the way you would use the swashes, that's when it's going to become really fun. So you can do the letter J with still this kind of like still the capital, but instead of closing it together, they're kind of like separated. There's a space in here. And then you just add that to make it look like a smaller or a lowercase j. So again, that's just kind of like this. You go down and you make that loop. And it's a letter J. Now to do the letter K, Again, as you, if you notice, I'm doing the same, the very, very similar kind of loops here and there. It's a letter K, that's pretty. Or you can just be as simple as. Letter K, All right? Now L for sure, I'm now this time, I'm really, really biased because it's my name. <laughs> Start playing around with this letter. So letter L, you can go as just simple like that. You can make it tilted and italic. Play around with the loop, make it a little bit longer. Like that. Just simple like that. That's a letter L too. <laughs> like this. So not a lot to do with the smaller case letter L. Now this time is my favorite letter M. I love letter M. This is a really good letter to practice when you're doing um, brush calligraphy because M has a lot of swoop up and down. It's kind of like the same with the letter W. So when I say why it's nice to practice this one because you go upstroke, downstroke, right? And you have to go up stroke again, and then down stroke, and then up stroke again, and then down stroke. That's why it's a really good letter to practice. Maybe the green is not a good idea. It's a little harder to see. Okay, 
So letter M, doing the same loop. Instead of having the same height, I'm gonna adjust this little long higher. And then this one is just the same as this, but I will swoop it down and go back up. All right, so let's try that again. Stop in there, downstroke. A little higher, same height as this one, but go pull it down and then go back up again. Another way is the opposite of that, go down and go, and go smaller on this one, same height, and then make this one really taller than usual and go stop where it meets this, your baseline basically. Downstroke, thick. So you can just, you can just do so much. You can like add um, from here, you can go. You can go up in there and that's still gonna look so pretty. So play around with your height, play around with the width, play around with the space in between each letter. You can like stretch it like this, see? You can make it closer like this or stretched out like this. So those are the things you wanna remember when you're playing around with your letters. Okay, so letter N, So when we want to do that, smaller, simple. Let's start this with a simple. So that's a simple plan. Now let's make it a little extra. That simple extra is just adjusting your baseline. So swooping it down a little bit and then pull it back up. Now we can add this in the beginning. Go down. Now go adjust the height and then still, that's your regular. You just as that adjusted higher and then swooped it back down here and that just went back up. Right, so letter O, we did the letter O earlier like that. So you can add again, this and add over here and like that. And like this and then go down. Again, this is different because we're doing the individual letters, but when you're writing words, you can still do it this way, but your, your, of course your word is going to look very differently. So let me show you, we have letter H. And if I wanna add those loops, I'm gonna start the O. And if I wanna add that one, see the spaces will be different, stretched a little bit. And there's your letter E. So it's just a very different look. It just depends on how big you want your letters. Um, if you have, you know, big space, then this is a fun way to do your letters or your um, creative lettering that way. So if you have a very small space, and of course you want very few, very little spaces in between your letters. But this one we have big paper, so I can have bigger spaces in between my letters. So letter O, <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes I still have to say the alphabet just so I know what's next. L M N O P. okay. We're now letter P. So P, this is our like regular P. I like can do this way. See what I did there? Let's let's do that again. Kind of like that. Kind of like a question mark. See? And then I'm going to start from where I ended. And from here, I'm going to pull back up and add that belly. 
So create a question mark like that. From where I ended, I'm going to pull it back up and then add my letter P. And then we can add this loop here to add character to these letters. Um, I, I think letter P is something that you can really play around with. From here, you can just do it like that. There's so many ways people letter this one. They do this. I don't think this is my favorite, but I, I've seen people do this. So kind of like making a very thin J. See, it's kind of like a letter J. I'm going to cool cross and then add the loop. But I think my favorite one is this one. The question mark. And pull back up. There we go. Then add that loop. Okay, L M N O P Q. <laughs> We're gonna do the Q, and then the Q. It starts again with this with this letter O, right? But basically, it's gonna be slanted this time. Very very slanted because you can't do it this way. If you do it straight up then it's going to look like that, but we're doing the brush calligraphy. So I'm going to go slanted and then pull it here and then add that little belly over there. It's kind of look like a letter B. So this is like many letters in here. O could be a B or it could be start at the bottom of the F. So many, many, many different ways. And then again, you can add those little See, that looks, see, this is when I, what I was talking about, make sure that it's still readable because you don't know if this is G or a letter Q now. Like Q. I have this. Also, if you are creating along with us today, would love to see your projects, make sure to tag us, um, make it with Michaels, Faber Castell USA, and also at Mommy Lay. I'd love to stay connected with you there and love to see all your projects. Now, letter R, I love R. Again, my daughter's name is Rain, so maybe I'm biased. I've written this many, many different times. So R is just like this, right? If we're gonna do a simple lettering. Some write it this way with this loop and this way. Okay. The way I play around with my letter R is going to just depends on how big I want my loop to be. For example, or if I want to start with the same height, I want to pull it down just a little bit and then also make my height like that. See this and this and that. It kind of like just making it a little extra each time. So this time I'm just, I just adjusted the height. I just kind of swooped down really, really low in there and just pulled everything back up. And then you can also be more slanted if you'd like. and have your finish loop going down instead of going up. A simple fine two. That's the R. I don't like capital letters, <laughs> but it's pretty. And we're going to create capital letters too, because so make sure to stay tuned for that class. We're going to create some capital letters. Now, what I sometimes correct myself when I'm doing letter R is that um, the width of my or the space of the, this, see, sometimes they have such big space in between and it's up to you you know you might like that look or you might want a skinnier which is like this so just play around with that and see what you like and again if you are 
keeping a journal and a notebook, make sure to kind of like star the ones that you like. So it's like, oh, you know what? I really like this look. This is my favorite. So having that journal where, when you, where you can look back on and say, oh yeah, I forgot. This one is my favorite. So you have that reference and it's super fun to have it and also very helpful. Now, letter S, this is a pretty letter, letter S. So if you were gonna write it in script, is like this, right? Sometimes people like to do like this. So sometimes I would letter it this way. And so what I would do, it's kind of like, most of the time I think I do this letter S in here, it's kind of like print and a script together. But how can you make this one extra is you can play around with the loop in here. But this is where it's going to be. I'm, I'm trying to be careful when I'm like adding swashes and loops here and there because I want my letters to still be readable because this one is going to look like a letter like a tiny L to me if I'm not careful. And then this one is like a perfect letter S. So how can I make this and turn this into a brush crib? So I'll play around with my hive, the size of my loops, and my swashes. Let's try that again. So play around with the hive. I stopped in there and it kind of like this, here you go, that swooping motion in there and like this. If you're just beginning, you can just make just very angled. You don't have to do the swash or the, the loop so crazy. So just go up and down and just do this. And it will still look super pretty. As you practice and as you play um, along, you're going to develop your skills and you're going to find the look that you really, really love. Now, letter T, letter T is just like that. And then I add this. How can we make this extra? That. And then this is where you can play around with your letter T's because you can just add this. And if you play around with that middle line, here we go. Do it this way. Do it that way. That I, to me personally, that's how I add my um, glow up with my letter T. <laughs> Isn't that middle thing, middle stroke? You can go. See how just it just kind of like frost together. You can go upside down and just add those little loops here and there and that's going to change things for you. Now letter U, I think I write letter U very pretty simple this way. There's not a whole lot that I can add in here. Sometimes the loop is on the top. Sometimes it's down here in the baseline of my letter. Sometimes I go like this and this is where, look, if you adjust the height in the beginning, this is, what letter is that? That's like, I, I have no idea. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you're very careful. So it's still readable. So even if you wanna adjust, you wanna adjust this one instead of the, the belly of your letter U. So again, here, same baseline, but I'm going to just kind of droop down a little and then add that one. Same with the letter V. I think V you can play around a little bit more. So letter V here, you can do just simple like this. You can do this way. Oh, this is pretty. I never realized I liked the letter V. Or you can do it this way. Right. Double T, Karen, I would usually just put them together like this. 
for example, little, right? So like that. And just have one crossing over. Instead of adding two in here, that's going to look really weird. So you want to do T and then just have one like that. Because <laughs> if we're going to do the word little, say, let's see, little. And we have two T's in there. And look at look what I did here with this word little. I created my L different than the last letter L. Because I have two letter L's in here, I want to have still variety of look because I all I already have this two T's in here. That's not going to give me, you know, a very big difference. And look at them with having the same height. How you can adjust that is just by simply having different heights, or this is where it's called the bounce lettering. And I think it's my favorite way to letter is the bounce. I don't like to be, um, I, I don't want to stay in the same height all the time. I love to play around with the height of my letters. So little. So the letter L's have the same bass lines and the T and the T. How can I adjust this? I should have made this a little taller. And remember what I said where you don't have to get everything perfect the first time. And then you can just add this loop and be like that. So that's the word little. So when you have two letters, the letter T together, that's I, I, to me, that's my advice is just have it at one stroke in the middle. Okay, so we have letter V. Now we have U, V, W. <laughs> we have letter W. W. Like this. You can be as simple as just that. Or a loop like this. See how it's kind of like everything kind of looks like a question mark to me. But this one, they have the same line. So where I started is where I'm going to end. And then I'm going to pull it back up. And then I'm going to go up. Really pay attention to how I write my letters. I don't go, I don't do it like that. I go stroke for stroke, one stroke after the other. So when you do it like this, that's the, the common mistake that I see with people doing lettering. They're like trying to finish one letter at one time, or even worse, they're trying to finish one word at one time. Now, if you're writing a script or, or you're signing a document, I can understand that. When, when you're doing creative lettering and brush lettering, always remember, keep it in your mind that it's one stroke after the other. Okay, W, now letter X. This is fun because as simple as that, at first, it wasn't, it was never my favorite. I'm like, how can I make the X look so pretty? It just looks so odd. Um, so we can always add that little tiny loop in here. And that right, it's kind of like writing a letter I, but you're really going over here to the right instead of it straight down or here. It's like you're really going here. And then from here, this is the baseline, right? I'm going to go swoop down just a little bit here. I'm just kind of pull it up. And mostly I think I'm stuck with this letter. This is the way, th this letter, this is the way I would normally, most of the time, um, if not 100%, I would letter my letter X. It's like, like this. I'm just kind of play around with that. You can just add that swoop, but basically the same look. I'm just adding, I'm just playing around with the, loop over here. So I just kind of added that little tiny loop and go down. All right. And then Y. Again, um, if you want to watch this, you can always go back to Michael's YouTube channel and watch the replay so that you can review some of the letters. It's a simple letter Y. This time I'm going to go like this. Oops. Sorry. Like that. And then when I'm doing, when I'm adding letters with loops like this, letter G, letter, um, letter Y, 
um, I kind of play around with the, this way, with the look of my loops. Sometimes they're really stretched out. Sometimes it's really tiny. Letter Z is the same way. So with this letter Y, let's play around. You want to make it sometimes like super big, like that. So play around with that. And then letter Z. I start so. Like that. So usually letter Z is like this, right? So I just kind of add, sometimes I like to just add this one line first, start with that, kind of go like writing a number three, but you're just gonna stretch down the bottom. And again, play around with that. So letter G, letter Y, letter Z, um, those are good letters that you can just play around with the size of your loop that you're going to make. So you can make it as big as you'd like and that's okay. Okay, so before I say goodbye, I wanna just go over the letters really fast to show you guys what it's going to look like. Let's use the, let's use the purple one. Nope, not the purple one. Let's use the pink one because I love pink. Okay, I'm gonna go fast this time. Um, so letter A, Letter B. Letter C. D. E. F. G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, W, X, Y, letter Z. Look how pretty the lowercase. There we go. I hope you guys enjoy this class. I really had, so, did I forget the letter V? Look at me, I forgot the letter V. I didn't sing it. <laughs> you guys, there you go. There's a letter V. <laughs> I told you sometimes I have to sing the darn alphabet. I forget one letter here and there. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. You're so good. You caught that one. But thank you, everybody, for joining us. I had such a wonderful time. Again, if you were, uh, you were able to play along with us, please, please tag us at Michael's. Um, it, make it with Michael's. Also, Faber Castell USA. Thank you for making this class possible. And thank you for having me here today. If you enjoy this class, I am possible that you're going to enjoy our next week's class. We're going to be doing some galaxy. It's all about the space, galaxy lettering. Um, it's watercolors. We're going to be using the Faber-Castell Albert Durer watercolor markers. That's going to be fun. So I can't wait to see you next week. As always, please stay healthy, stay well, stay creative, 
and stay happy. See you guys again next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye.